everybody and welcome to the Riverside Studios here in Cologne. Welcome at home in front of your screens at Mux TV and you are in for a treat tonight. Welcome here in the studio as well here in Cologne and um, you're going to be here live in the studio when two wonderful musicians play the music of Toots Tielemans. Kenny Werner and Grégoire Marie have put themselves together and are on a, a tour to tribute this wonderful musician. Toots Tielemans was born on the 29th of April 1922 the same date as someone called Duke Ellington, so that, that is a good sign for sure. And he passed away two years ago on the 22nd of August, and he's missed in the music world for sure. This evening will bring him back to life again with his wonderful music. He played, obviously, with people like Charlie Parker and, uh, and Ella Fitzgerald, and actually anybody you can even think of. And he, of course, played with the two wonderful musicians who are here tonight playing his music. Kenny Warner played with him for years, for 17 years from 1995 on, and they were very, very good friends. Um, they did not only stay, be, uh, spend time on st stage together, they spent time as good friends, and Kenny said that he's just the most amazing person, such a humble person, and uh, Grégoire um, got to play with him also for years. He was uh, sort of a mentor for him as well. He looked up to him when he started playing the, uh, the harmonica when he was 17 years old. So. They are going to play music you cannot imagine. I got to hear the sound check. It was so wonderful. I wish you a wonderful evening with these two wonderful musicians, and I would ask you to give them a great round of applause for Gregoire Marais and Kenny Werner. Thank you so much. <laughs> The wonderful sound, obviously, we're just here tonight, is also coming from KV2 Audio and uh, from Triad Orbit. So thank you for uh, doing this evening, and we wish you all a lovely evening here in the Riverside Studios in Cologne.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we are doing tunes that are from different periods of Toots Thielman and uh, Tielemans, excuse me. Sometimes I get an American diphthong or something. You know, Toots Tielemans. Um, and uh, the first piece was Days of Wine and Roses, which he recorded with Bill Evans. The second piece was a beautiful Brazilian tune by Luis Essa titled The Dolphin, and he and I played and recorded that. Um, so we're going to be hitting things from his different periods, and it's just amazing to us uh, how much of an effect he had on so many different areas and people in music, and yet what he cared the most about was moving forward, you know, modern. He really, you know, not as a style, as a philosophy. Keep searching, you know. And so we're trying to do him honor by just doing that. So the next piece we're playing is, is it Shagan? Shagan. Yeah. This is uh, from uh, something he recorded on his Brazil project, which is kind of amazing. Uh, I like to say that most of the time people will say Brazilian music had an effect on them. And Toots, a uh, European musician from Belgium, actually is one of the few people you could say had an effect on Brazilian music. So this is something he recorded w on the Brazil project called Chega de Saudade.
you'll have to forgive me. I was trying to go formal for the video and everything, but uh, this is my bowling shirt, so. <laughs> so now we're going to play something. Uh, listening to Toots play a melody was like listening to Frank Sinatra sing a melody. It was really amazing. Um, so we used to do something. That's why the synthesizer's here, really. It's for this next tune and a couple of tunes like it. I would play strings for him, and he would play this melody, and it would feel like a Hollywood soundtrack, you know? And so we thought that should be part of this, as we're trying to touch on a lot of different phases and still bring our own thing. This one's kind of, you kind of do it the way he did it, you know? But Gregoire still does it differently, so. This is a Frank Sinatra tune called All the Way.
Thank you so much. Good luck with you. Kenny, bueno. We'll be back. right now so please uh, sit at home enjoy a glass of wine and enjoy the conversation uh, I had because it was very interesting to, uh, interesting to find out what um, the two have to do with toots and a lot a lot I can't say it all at once because it's 20 minutes so anyway we're gonna take a short break have fun uh, drinking a glass of wine and enjoying yourselves maybe talking to the two of them and thank you so much for the first set it was wonderful thanks a lot <laughs> You at home have already had the pleasure of listening to these wonderful musicians who are here with me tonight. Um, we, I haven't heard anything yet because this is a pre-recorded interview, but I do get to talk to you about um, your music. Thank you so much for being here at the Riverside Studios today. It's a, really a great honor to have you here. Um, you're playing a tribute to Toots Tielemans, uh, so we could talk about your lives as musicians without Toots for hours on end. So I thought we'd talk about your relationship with Toots and Grégoire. Um, you uh, started playing the harmonica when you were 17, even though you started um, playing the banjo, I think, because that was what your father well, played. My, my father is a banjo player, still is, uh, mm -hmm. but I've never really touched the banjo. Oh. Um, uh, my brother is a vibraphone player, and plays also percussions, very good musician. And um, yeah, I first started playing the harmonica when I was 17 in high school, basically. And um, I actually picked up the chromatic harmonica because I was um, I was sort of forced to because I wanted to change major from languages to music. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't accept me with the diatonic harmonica, which I was playing at the time. And then I, s I started playing the the chromatic. And then I discovered Toots Stillman's and it just kind of rocked my, my world. <laughs> Which is uh, absolutely obvious for anybody who listens to his mu music. Um, you also met him when you played, um, did your album in 2012, your d debut album, probably before that as well. Um, Kenny, you worked with him for, for years, um, since 1995, um, and you've had um, not only a life as a wonderful musician, but also as a wonderful teacher. Um, what is the one thing that you learned from Toots that you give to your students still? Um, I think to to love your audience mm -hmm. he really was in love with every audience we'd get out there and you'd think after all these years he could just kind of oh it's another gig whatever but he would really form this love relationship with every audience and I think the other thing is he loved the music when he was playing it so much that even if he had nerves or fear or anything it would go away and it would be replaced by his love for music he seemed to be such a, a humble person. Um, you wouldn't ever think that someone like Toots would have nerves before going on stage. Did you? Could you tell when there were evenings or when he was a little bit more nervous than on other evenings? And you kn know why that was the way it was? He was always a little nervous before every gig because he really cared about them. Mm -hmm. But it would always go away. He was more nervous at things like when we did Carnegie Hall. You know, then he'd be thinking, man, I mean, what am I doing in Carnegie Hall? You know, I've asked myself that question too, you know. Um, but uh, it would always disappear. The, the applause would already make him feel loved, and he would immediately return the love. And, and then that was a, the past. I, I read something that kind of um, combined both of you with a, a very wonderful musician named Bill Evans. Um, he, um, he was asked at uh, somewhere, uh, tell me about practicing, and he said... Um, uh, I practice the minimum, right. and um, and Toots met Bill Evans, and he wanted him to play on his first album with for Warner Music. And um, Toots said, "Wait a second, um, you have to come listen to me play first because I'm not sure if I'm good enough." Um, that wh how, did Toots practice a lot, and and or was did, were they on one level, you know, Bill Evans and him and you about the practicing and and being kind of humble about how good you really are? Uh, I, I when I at the point I knew him. He would always be, he'd just be playing his instrument, but he would practice. He said when he woke up, he would practice giant steps and then 
his wife would bring him his yogurt. And he would be practicing in bed when he woke up. So I think he practiced a lot. Bill Evans wasn't saying, that was in my book, actually. Mm -hmm. He wasn't saying that I practiced the minimum in terms of time. He was saying I practiced the minimum in terms of material. So he would take us, but I think he practiced quite a lot, more than both of us, Toots and I. Mm -hmm. um, but he practiced a finite amount of material, so it could really become fully, fully formed. And that's why when you hear his playing, it's a series of perfect phrases. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that was the key. Good one. Um, for an evening like tonight, you've been um, on tour with, with Kenny doing these tributes. Um, how much do you practice and how much do you listen to Toots to kind of get his vibe? Or are you playing it your way? I'm definitely trying to play it my way. Not because I, uh, it's just the way I have to do it, but it is, it's because I think that's also the way Toots would have really enjoyed this tribute being, uh, being done for it, you know. The reason why I became so close to Toots is because I I sort of had my own voice. I was obviously really influenced by him, but I also had a kind of a way of playing the instrument that was a bit different than his. And he really respected that. I think he really liked it. So if now I'm doing this tribute for him, I, I, I shouldn't change that because that's really what he, he liked. And um, it's also a way to explore the music... Um, and find new and exciting things that we can um, uh, l listen to and hear and 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 get into uh, with with the help of Tutsinus and his his spirit. You know, we just try. Sometimes we feel his spirit really close. <laughs> you know, when we play, and it's kind of this warm embrace that is like okay, and uh, it's it's a beautiful thing. But I would never do a tribute like that unless I could come with something I feel really original. You know, I just wouldn't want to just imitate him. It would, to me, make no sense. You know? How did you choose the pieces that you're playing at these concerts? Well, we looked at the repertoire, which is huge for Toots, you know. And that's the thing. We, we can't play every single tune that he played because he's played so many songs and meaningful ones, you know, in his career. But also, Kenny had... Uh, about more than 17 years playing with Toots, so he, he could also guide and be, okay, uh, this piece is really important. We've been playing it a lot, and we would see and see if we could explore it and find new ways of playing it, in a sense. I don't know. Do you want to tell him that story of what, when you first met Toots? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the thing is, for me, Toots, one of the reasons also that I wanted to do this um, tribute is because Toots has been very influential, not only musically, but also humanly for me. And uh, I've... When I first met him, I, th I, r I met a person that was really, really special and really warm and, and, and very generous with me. And I was very sensitive uh, to that. And the first time we met, he gave me basically the best piece of advice I've ever received from anybody. Um, and it was that if I liked his music, if I liked the way he was playing his, the instrument, I should kind of look at it and and influ kind of study it a little bit, but then detach myself from it and find another way to play the instrument and another way to, to play music, in a sense. And that was the best piece of advice I received. And I received it relatively early. I think I was 17. Mm -hmm. And if, it's something that obviously I've never forgotten. But also it really shaped my, my path, you know, because um, I really followed that. And, um, and I believe that thanks to his... Uh, words i i was able to kind of do what i what i did and what I'm, I'm i'm doing now you know and i luckily met a lot of great musicians that also pushed me in that direction as well kenny what is one of your first memories you have with toots oh well i've, I've said this a bunch of times but uh, <laughs> but one thing i want to say just about the tribute obviously when toots died there were a lot of harmonica players that had an idea of doing a tribute i can imagine <laughs> yeah and i was getting a lot of phone calls you know uh, but I said, you really have to talk to his management and his wife and, you know, you know what they want to do. And um, we didn't, I haven't done anything like that until they suggested this. We started by doing a gig at the Toots Thielmans Festival in Belgium, in his hometown. Um, and Gregoire's who they wanted because they knew that he was Toots' favorite player because when Toots couldn't make one gig at the San Francisco Jazz Festival... He said, well, either cancel it or unless Gregoire can play my part. And the reason was that 
there's also, I mean, I don't blame anybody for sounding like Toots. It's kind of, everybody does. It's almost like if you're going to play jazz, regular jazz, you know, tunes, standards, chords, it's kind of hard not to sound like Toots Thielman. He's like the foundation of it. So everybody does. But um, they, they picked Gregoire for the same reason he picked Gregoire, uh, because he doesn't sound that much like Toots, and he doesn't try to. Mm -hmm. So a memorial concert, a memorial tour would have had a very eerie feeling to me of like, oh, somebody's playing the part of Toots Thielman, you know. Instead, we're experimenting on that music, and I don't even know who would be pleased with it, but I know he would. Mm -hmm. For sure. Which is wonderful. Yeah. Is there, I mean, I'll ask you about how you, you know, your first memory of, of, of Toots in a minute, but again, but um, is there one song that, or, that is hard for you to play because it brings back a lot of memories? It's not hard to play. It's really wonderful to play because mm -hmm. it brings back those memories. Because there's a couple of things I couldn't do with anybody else. And one is when we do All the Way, mm -hmm. Frank Sinatra tune. And I play strings for him. That's why we have the synthesizer. We had that idea somewhere early. And I said, you know, I could really make it sound like Hollywood if you want, because he's like a Hollywood voice. Suddenly it sounds like a movie soundtrack, oh, which he's done plenty, you know? And uh, so when we play that, that's inescapable. But I'm really grateful because I thought I would never get to play that role again because there was nobody that I would want to mm -hmm. hear imitate him in that role, you know? So so wonderful. I, I was actually watching an interview with uh, Toots. He was saying um, that his roots obviously were in uh, from Belgium, which is uh, French, um, and you're from Switzerland, and you're from Brooklyn, New York. Anyway, he was saying when he went to places that had anything to do with uh, France, it would be hard to him, or it would be wonderful for him to play because he was it, he actually got choked up once in a while. People would be crying because there was some sort of cultural thing connection um, with the audience. Do you have that when you're in America in certain places? Do you have that when you're in Switzerland in in, in certain places as well? Well, the tune that that would happen with, and that is actually even a better example, mm -hmm. is Nemekita Pa, mm -hmm. Jacques Brel. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm so glad, I, I, I wouldn't want to play with that many people, you know, but, and Gregoire's feeling it for himself, you know. Uh, so that's another one, I'm really grateful just, and I have a part, and I only play the part. And uh, I'm grateful for those moments, you know. Um, as far as emotionally, no, I don't think I get that, um, I, I, I don't know anybody that ever got that emotional with the audience except a singer I used to work with, a uh, great Broadway but, uh, star, Betty Buckley. Mm -hmm. She would get so, take people so deep into that. And, you know, as much as I love jazz and, you know, all the hipness of that and the angle and the rhythm, um, I'm, I'm a bit of a dramatist myself, so I miss gigs that don't have any of that anywhere, you know. When I play trio, there are certain tunes we might get to that, but, you know, not, not, not to the point where... I don't think to the point where, where Toots would bring it. Grégoire, um, I, I, uh, Quincy Jones called Toots Stink, and Toots is obviously not his real name. Jean was his real name. Uh, did you have a nickname for him, or did he have a nickname for you? <laughs> no, we never <laughs> <laughs> get to that. Uh, but uh, no, no, I, I didn't have any nickname for Toots, or <laughs> he didn't have any nickname for me. Um, when you two got together and uh, discussed this, this uh, tribute, and, and you were um, and obviously very honored to be playing as well, and, and you do it so beautifully, um, did you talk a lot about Toots, or did you kind of, uh, you know, was did was that a, or do you do that when you're on tour now and, and spending time together, or do you talk about what other other stuff do you talk about? I'm sure you talk about lovely musical stuff as well. We talk <laughs> about a lot of things, but we 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 talk a little bit about Toots, but not a a, a lot, you know, because. Um, the music speaks louder than words in a sense. You know, like we have to let the music speak for itself. If we go too much into details of what we should do, how we should go about things, we're going to kill the, the moment in a sense. We have to be able to kind of receive what it is that we, we're we going to explore and just go with it and trust it. Mm -hmm. And we, we have a lot of trust for each other, which is really what a duo is all about. I get music. Music is all about that. But once you make it even smaller, like a duo, you really need a lot of that. You know? When you're teaching, um, Kenny, do you tell your students um, that it's important to, to really get along with musicians? I mean, um, when I talk to other musicians, and especially when they're on tour and they're playing, especially jazz, you have a feeling they they somehow connect. Of course, there are musicians that don't get along so well, but it ha we have a feeling that you that you have this kind of friendships, kind of deep friendship when you're together. Do you tell your students that that's important to, to get along, or do you no, think it's not I, that important? I have never really addressed that. No? I mean, one other thing I'd like to just say about picking the tunes, I think it looks like 
just broadly, we're trying to do something from the different things that he's been in. For example, if you didn't do any Brazilian songs, we may not play them in a Brazilian way, but you know, he influenced Brazilian music, so the Brazil Project. So we knew we had to do that. Then, then he played with Jacob Pistorius. You know, I mean, even, then he played Jacques Brel like no one else ever played it. You know, then he played movie soundtracks. You know, and and then he played with Bill Evans. <laughs> and each one of these things are 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 remembered in the jazz world. You know, he really left a mark. It's not like, hey, I played with this one, that one. You have to look it up. Everybody knows about those different things with him. So I think we did a little bit of each thing to represent those periods. Um, as far as the last thing you asked. No, I, I, I don't, you know, I now appreciate, as I've gotten older, uh, good people. Mm -hmm. Actually, <clears throat> when I'm playing, I'm looking more at the soul of that person more than these days. And I will accept even different kind of playing if I can see their soul's motivation or whatever. You know, if I feel that connection, that's become very important for me personally. But, I mean, I remember being in bands where, you know, it was just people you were trying to avoid, you know. <laughs> You know, I'd love to hear some names on that, but I'm not going to be yeah, in the right. spot. I mean, in general, <laughs> in general, um, musicians that I've ever been with don't talk that much, like on on the road and, and on the train, and everybody kind of puts their headphones on, they do their own thing. But we've had a few conversations that were about philosophy, a few conversations about our our spiritual uh, motivations, and uh, then just these little these little s episodes would come up about it's one way or another. Which, which is really nice, mm -hmm. you know, just little backstory things. Well, you, you both have said he's just, he was just such a nice, warm, wonderful person. Um, there's another person who says, says that as well, and um, he's, he also says hi, hi to you, and I wanted to show you this. Um, he sent a, a short message for you guys. He sent it in German, because we're in Germany, but I'll translate it for you in a second. Hello, all in Deutschland, aus Cape Cod, USA. Hi, Kenny, hope you're well. Haven't seen you for a long time. Hugs and kisses. Uh, Toots war ein wunderbarer Musiker, ein exzellenter, superber Musiker mit einer Kenntnis für Harmonie, dass es also un unvorstellbar war. Ein ganz großer Gentleman und ein, der hat komponiert, der hat uh, so viele Stücke geschrieben und uh, wir waren gut befreundet und ich vermisse ihn immer noch. Das gibt, das war wirklich wunderbekannt und uh, ich hoffe, dass er lange in Erinnerung bleiben kann für, bei allen Menschen auf der ganzen Welt. Vielen Dank. Und lieber Grüße aus, wie gesagt, Cape Cod, USA. So he said, uh, you know, he was a very humble, um, you speak a little bit of German, right? But uh, um, mm -hmm. and he, a little, um, he was a, a humble musician, and co did co compose, and, he, and he's just a wonderful person and a wonderful musician, and he hopes that he will remember, be remembered uh, for a long time to come, which I'm sure he will, especially when you're doing these kind of wonderful concerts and tributes to Toots. Um, I heard that uh, Toots started doing concerts for the back for $50 a concert, um, playing for bar mitzvahs and stuff like that. Kenny, do you remember any stuff you did back then when you were starting off or f when uh, were you were playing? He said, he said I, was, I was playing these bands and or the songs and it had to be on the same tempo and it really didn't mean anything much for the soul. Um, but do you remember playing those kind of things? And yeah. do you remember as well? <laughs> in fact, because there's 30 years difference in our age, mm -hmm. but we had that in common because when he came to America, that's how he survived. He was on Long Island on the train, uh, you know, doing all the weddings bar mitzvahs. At, when I was 13, I was bar mitzvahed, and we had one of those bands. They were sometimes they could be very hip bands, but you know, you played dance music and the right music at the right moment, you know. And uh, the band that I so I sat in with that band, and then they hired me. So from 13 on, wow. probably the same year as he was there, I was doing those gigs too. So he and I would laugh about the intros and the outros, <laughs> and this is what you do here. We, we, we had the same stories, even though we were, you know, I was just a kid doing what he was doing as an adult. Yeah. That's so amazing. What about you, Greg Wyman? Is it a different, a different time? Uh, yeah, do you remember I playing? I haven't really had much chance uh, playing in uh, weddings and stuff like that, but I did a lot of gigs uh, in New York for very little money. <laughs> I mean, you know, and I, I basically paid my dues like that, you know, just doing that every single night, coming back home at five in the morning and going to school at nine. So I did a lot of that, yeah. And if obviously you're not only doing uh, this uh, this tour right now, you're also doing other things. I heard there might be a record that's coming out next year. Could, could that be true? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of projects I'm involved in right now. Like um, uh, I've, I've just recorded something in trio with uh, Romain Collin, pianist, French pianist, and um, uh, guitarist Bill Frizzell. 
uh, which is sort of like folk music almost. And uh, I'm about to record uh, with Edmar Castaneda, the harpist from Colombia, and a duo. Um, and we're going to do a mix between jazz and Colombian music. And uh, there is, uh, I'm also finishing a record which is a gospel kind of influence record that I've uh, worked on for, for a little, uh, little while now. So, so those are the things that I've that are in the works. <laughs> a, a lot a lot of uh, stuff going on musically, but it's wonderful. What about you, Kenny? Are you going to uh, take it a little bit slower now, or are you just going to keep going on with music? I hope this second is the answer to that. <laughs> well, I mean, I yeah, I keep going on. Things have upticked a little bit. I was pulling back, but the most important work I'm doing right now is I have an institute called the Effortless Mastery Institute at Berkeley, and um, I have a, a different way of teaching I just hit on. It turns out it's tremendously effective, and useful for more than just playing. And after many years of seeing, you know, how good my book has done for people, I mean, I get people have had very deep experiences with it and my teaching. I've last four or five years I decided, yeah, I need to embrace this and I need to pass it on. So I am teaching it as courses now at Berkeley in my institute, but I also want to teach teachers to be able to uh, teach this this thing I see teach them to use their intuition to do the same thing. And I think that's very most important right now. However, I do have a, a CD coming out in the fall, a solo record on a German label, a pirouette, um, and it's called The Space. And we had earlier this year uh, my trio with Ari Hornick and Johannes Weidmuller. Uh, we released a CD called Animal Crackers. So, you know, it's still going, but if I said what are my most important now, I need to spend these next few years trying to train other people to uh, to do what I'm doing. And um, you don't, shouldn't do this now because you're supposed to stay tuned and, and watch the second set of this wonderful concert, but you should uh, go online and you'll find lots of classes uh, from uh, Kenny and you'll learn a lot. I learned a lot just by listening to a, a couple before we get, I got to talk to you. It's been a great honor talking to both of you. Um, I'm, I could talk, we only touched the surface. We could <laughs> go on for hours, but unfortunately um, I have to stop talking now and we're going to listen to the more, more music. Thank you too so much and um, enjoy your evening in the Riverside Studio and you at home enjoy the wonderful music. And we are back here with uh, the wonderful musicians Kenny Warner and uh, Grégoire Marie who are playing a tribute to Toots Tielemans and they're doing such a wonderful job, of course, because they know what they are doing. And even, even if they're playing a tribute, they're playing it fresh and new and we're just enjoying the evening and we hope you are as well at home watching from all over the world. We um, have people watching, so welcome and welcome Hugh in the studio again for being here in the Riverside Studios uh, in Cologne. Thank you so much to these two wonderful musicians who are going to be playing um, some more of Toots' wonderful music um, and a couple of songs that I'm sure you all know, but I'm not going to say too much. I'm just going to say, please, with a warm welcome, welcome Grégoire Marie and uh, Kenny Werner again to the studio.
Thank you. Uh, the first piece was an arrangement by Gregoire called of, On All Blues, which Toots used to play a lot, but uh, that arrangement is really radical, really nice. And the second piece was when he played with uh, Jaco Pistorius, another, you know, whole world. I mean, same guy played with Jaco Pistorius and, you know, the Brazilian people and movie soundtracks and Bill Evans. So it's really quite amazing. And that's called Three Views of a Secret. And now we're going to do, oh yes, and this is yet another world where he really made his mark, which was playing some of the music of Jacques Brel. And it's really a prayer, the way Toots did it, and it's really a prayer for Gregoire and my, me, myself too. We'll be playing Nemekita Pa.
So now we're going to play the piece that Toots is most famous for, that he wrote. And again, we have an ambitious arrangement of it, which I think is what he would like. This is called Blue Zet. And again, I'd like to thank you, from Gregoire Murray. Thank you. Kenny Warner.
like to end the concert the way Toots ended many, almost many of the concerts for years when I was playing with him. And I would always play strings for it, you know, and the title of our tour is Between a Smile and a Tear. So this particular one is closer to the latter, I think. <laughs> this is, uh, I think, Toots' view of the world. It's called What a Wonderful World. Thank you both so much for taking us all on this 
magical, musical memory of Toots. It was an amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I have to thank some other people too for this wonderful evening because um, it wouldn't be happening if uh, we couldn't be here in the Riverside Studios. And uh, for MOOCs TV and um, for letting, be, letting the world be part of this as well, watching from all over the world, from uh, KV2 uh, Audio Germany and uh, Triad um, Orbit for, making, for sponsoring this evening as well. And of course, to you, Grégoire, and to you, Kenny, for this unbelievable musical evening. It was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. As I said before, I'm sure Toots is uh, watching from heaven and dancing. I wish you all a wonderful evening. Take some of it home in your soul and uh, here too. Take the evening home, the music in your soul. Music is just everything. Good night to everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.